God comes for you today on from the book of Luke, chapter 7, verses 37 through 48. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, we all are, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with her hair and kissing his feet and anointed them when with this ointment. And when the Pharisees, which had bitten him, said, uh, well, I'm sorry, when the Pharisees, which had bitten him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he was a prophet, he would have known who and what manner of woman this was that well, touched him, mm -hmm. for she is a sinner. <laughs> and Jesus answered him, Simon, I have somewhat to say, I have somewhat to say unto thee. All right. And he said, Master, <coughs> say on. <laughs> this was getting heated, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, there was a certain <laughs> there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence, well, the other 50. Uh -huh. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell them, therefore, which of them, which of them would love me most? Simon answered and said, I suppose he that was forgiven the most. That's right. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Mm -hmm. And he said, and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Mm -hmm. Thou gave me no water to my feet, mm -hmm. but she has washed my feet with her tears yes, and Thank wiped you. them with her hair. Yes. Thou gave me no kisses, yes. but this woman, since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Mm -hmm. wow. My head with oil thou didst not anoint but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Mm. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, wow. are forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. For she loved wow. much. Yes. She loved much. Yes. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Yes. And he said unto her, thy yes. sins are forgiven. Yeah. The yeah. word of God yeah. for Thank the people Lord. of God yeah. and Thank his yeah. word, I tell you, it's already blessed. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Hey. Yeah. Amen for the word. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. It is what it is. Yes. And that's all it is. Yes. At this time, our guest speaker, before we have our sermonic message, um, is the Minister Pamela McDonald, McDaniel, amen. Minister McDaniel is a North native who accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior at an early age of nine. Lord Jesus. Minister McDaniel is a mother of two young men, ages 31 and 21. She works as an educator for children with autism full-time and part-time. Mm. She's a very active member of the Mount Olive Baptist Church family in the city of East Orange, New Jersey. There she serves as, as she serves on the deaconess ministry, the Sunday school teaching staff, the adult praise team as worship leader, and the assistant director and member of the Unity Choir. Although she stays busy, Minister McDaniel keeps her focus and love on her relationship with yes, Christ, who is at the forefront of her life. Mm. All, of her pa all of her past and some of her present involves her love for ministering in song. Yes, she has worked with various groups and choirs as well as recording artists. Right. She has also recorded some songs as well. 
As her relationship with Christ strengthened, she felt the calling on her life to share, the, share and Major. preach his gospel. Going forward, she is submitting to the Lord and pursuing future studies at the New York Theological Seminary Amen. as she goes into the calling of ministry. Right, yeah. In everything that she does, she gives all praise Major. and glory to the Lord Amen. who Amen. continues to order her steps. Yes. Thank you. Thank and so you. what it says to me that there is a God-fearing, God-loving, Amen, woman of God, Amen. that the Lord is going to use today. So at this time, we have a pre-sermon selection, and the next voice you hear will be that of our dear, dearly beloved sister, Sister McDaniel. Amen.
so much for that blessing, that song. Only what you do for Christ. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Give an honor to God, who is indeed the head of my life. Thank you, To Reverend Gloria Lyde Smith, senior pastor and founder, presiding. Yes, Lord. To Reverend Bernard Johnson, the worship leader. Amen. Thank you so much for warming up the house. Yeah. All right. To his beloved wife, Lady Sonia Johnson. Yes, yes, yes. For Reverend to Reverend West. Yes. Thank you for your hospitality. I'd like to also thank uh, Sister Natalie Taylor Amen. for her hospitality and, yeah. and sending the letter of invitation Amen. and Amen. you know. <laughs> God bless you all and, and to the house. Yes, thank you. Members and friends, yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Minister and God bless you. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you so much for having me. Yes. It is indeed an honor. And although I'm nervous, yeah. Why? I am going to praise God anyhow. Amen. 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 <laughs> oh Lord, my God. When I Oh, oh, oh. 
I, I chose that song yes. because that song speaks to when we truly give God the adoration and the reverence that he deserves. And so it falls right along in with the scripture that was so um, powerfully read by our Reverend West. God bless you. Yeah, thank you. And because she read the scripture already, I'm just going to highlight the last few verses of the text. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss. But this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. And her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. So today I want to speak from the topic of show up with a purpose. If I wanted to nickname this, this sermon, it would say, she came to the party, but she didn't come empty handed. If you've ever planned any kind of social gathering or party, you know it requires preparation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Special detailing needs to go into everything involved, everything from mm. the kind of food that you are preparing yes. to where it's going to be. Yes. Seating arrangements have to be considered, amen, amen. to accommodate guests. Mm. How many guests will you have and who exactly will be selected to be on the guest list? Mm. Mm. Once the guest list has been decided, now you must select the kind of save the date cards and invitations that will go along with the theme of the event or the occasion, if you will. That's right. So now that all of the other formalities have been established and protocol has been maintained, the gathering is set. All right. yeah. And let me just say that protocol is always necessary when we have to reserve a, a, a table seating section, a reserved table seating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If your event has a reserved seating section, it would be probably considered an event that most would want to attend. Amen. Can I get a witness here? Amen. And if you are having a high-end shindig with dignitaries, you had better uh -huh. establish some kind of security detail, amen? amen? It just makes sense. Whether or not we need to admit that sometimes people like to crash a party. And we know they may not have received an invite, Wow! but perhaps, just perhaps, they figured it was an oversight. And if you want to go even further, we, we know that those are some of the same folk who will, who will come to a party or a barbecue or a celebration empty-handed. They will come with nothing but an empty container so that they can take food out and bring it home. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. They don't come for no other reason but to take, not to bring anything to contribute. However, this woman with the alabaster box is not our average guest. She had a motive and a goal. Some guests may even be there just to be nosy, just to be a part of what's going on or to start some stuff. However, in her case, her agenda was pure. Yeah, it was right. genuine. Yeah. She did not come for any lame reasons or selfish motives. She just needed to get to Jesus. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Have you ever had a moment in your life when wow. you just needed to get to Jesus? Yeah. There may have been all kinds of crazy distractions throughout the week, and you needed to just get to Jesus. Wow. Through sickness, uh -huh. difficulties, yeah. Yeah. distractions, yeah. you needed to just get to, 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 to yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Satan has tried to mess with you all week long. Yeah. And is trying to mess with you and will continue yeah. to mess with you. Come on. 
But if you can just get to the master. Yes. 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 That's yes. It. And even in the church, we need to just get to Jesus. Yes. Yes. Listen, I know there are programs where there are bishops and there are elders and there are preachers and we are all assembled for a reason. But I just need to see my Jesus. Yes. Yes. Even today, I know we're gathered for a program and everybody look real nice and sharp and everything. But if I can just get to Jesus. Yes. I know the program yes. is tight. I know uh -huh. it's set. I know we have to make sure that we follow the proper order and protocol has uh -huh. been set up. But if I can just get to Jesus, yeah. hear me, sometimes, just sometimes, we may need to open up the doors of the church before the offering. Wow. Yeah. It's not about the religion. It's about a relationship. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm just saying, is there anybody here that just needs to get to Jesus? Yeah. When we are desperate for Jesus to come into our hearts to fix us, Yes, I could care less about the opinion of others. Yes. I just need to see who? My Jesus. Yes. Can I get a witness yes. here? Yes. So when we look at this story, uh -huh. we will notice that the religious leaders of that day had deceptive motives. Wow. They weren't really uh -huh. interested. Wow. They weren't interested. Uh -huh. They weren't interested in breaking bread with oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. They did not even care about the uh -huh. fellowship. Uh -huh. They weren't going to be sitting around singing, oh, what a fellowship, oh, what a joy divine. Uh -huh. No, there wasn't going to be any of that. Uh -huh. From what we can tell from the word of God, this story is significant. Why? Because all four Gospels covers it. Yeah. Right. Right. So in order to dissect the whole story of who was there and, and why and where and, and, and what they had to say about this intriguing woman, we need to just look at each account to investigate. Amen? Amen. In the books of Matthew and Mark, it says that Jesus was in the house of Simon the leper. Mm. In their account, it reads that the disciples were the ones complaining about the cost of the perfume and how the amount of money could have been um, going to feed the poor, which is a noble cause. However, we will see if they truly were really concerned about that. In the book of Luke, the word goes on to emphasize that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house and how the Pharisee said to himself, if, if Jesus was truly a prophet, he would know that this woman was a sinner. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Jesus responded with a reprimand on how her actions honored him more than the Pharisee yeah. Yeah. who didn't even bother to follow proper wow. protocol. Yeah. Uh -huh. For it gets let alone the son of God. Wow. Uh -huh. Therefore, so far, we have an account of more than one person complaining about this woman. Mm. Now let us look at John's account. I like uh. John's account. Mm. In the book of John, he gives a more detailed account. John truly paints the picture. In John's account, in chapter 12, verse 1 through 7, we learn that Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead, was in fact there. We learn that Martha was serving, and the woman with the alabaster box was in fact Mary who also in earlier chapter 10 sitting at the feet of Jesus yeah. while her sister Martha worked and complained that she wasn't helping her. Uh, Everybody uh, complained about this one. Uh, yeah. So now we have confirming evidence that this intriguing woman loved Jesus. Yes. 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 Wow. Amen? Yes. We can now see that she would stop heaven and earth and all of her plans throughout the day just to worship at the master's yes. feet. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, she don't care nothing about the program. She just wants to worship. Y'all wow. yeah. see where I'm going with this? Yeah. John also wow. reveals to us that one of the disciples who complained was in fact Judas Iscariot. Oh, yeah. Are you surprised? He complained about how expensive this perfume was and how it cost a year's worth of salary. He also uh, said the cost could go towards feeding the poor. Notice he wasn't concerned about the cost of betraying Jesus. No. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh. Isn't it ironic that oh. Jesus, that Judas was concerned about the cost of the perfume, but he didn't count the cost. Oh. Luke 14, 28 through verses 32 says, describes it plainly, for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost? Uh -huh. Whether he has enough to complete it, Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and it is not able to finish. And if we skip down to verse 32, it reads, Therefore, 
Any one of you who does not renounce all that he has mm. cannot be my disciple. Oh, right. Jesus. Wow. Sometimes we need to renounce some stuff. Yeah. Right. Amen? Amen? Isn't it just like the devil with his hypocritical self? <laughs> but anyhow, let's continue. Uh -huh. We can always depend on John to give us a detailed account. That's Amen? Right. So, yeah. so now we know who all is present at this gathering. Mm. Okay, what I can see that all these people, no one could see the big picture and the significance of what this woman was yeah. doing according to biblical account. From what I can tell, the Pharisees had a goal and a reason, as did Judas. Because in John's account, Judas made his offer with the Pharisee after wow. this dinner. Wow. 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 So everybody had a motive here, amen? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This meeting had all the fixings of being troublesome. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees wanted to discredit Jesus. They were trying to find whatever they could on Jesus. And it was obvious because they were so hell-bent on trying to sh shut Jesus down. They couldn't even follow the proper custom. Hallelujah. In other words, they tried to serve Jesus a five-course meal with just a sandwich and made somebody. Then they wanted to see Lazarus who Jesus raised from the dead, not because they had an, a genuine interest in Lazarus, right. but because they wanted to have him killed. Uh -huh. yeah. Why? Why would they want to have this innocent man killed? After all, this resurrected Lazarus was ruining their popular rep reputation. <laughs> See? Yeah. Now that Jesus raised him from the dead, the people are now thinking that Jesus truly is the son of God. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Therefore, if we have Jesus, why do we need y'all? Oh, we had Jesus. Oh. The Pharisees knew this. So this gathering, again, was not your typical gathering. Yeah. Uh, have you ever attended a social gathering that may have been awkward? Yes. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And you may not have wanted to go in the first place, Amen. depending on who was there. Amen. You know how we do. Uh -huh. We call our friends up first and ask who is there. That's and depending on what they say, of who is there, we may or may not go. Amen? Right, Am I the only one here? Am I right about it? Preacher, preacher. But this woman, Mary, was not concerned about any of that. Uh -huh. She didn't even have concern for herself about their motives. Wow. But let's further examine her. She comes in and completely interrupts their whole line of questioning. Yeah. She may not have even been invited. And if that's the case, that's a big deal. Yeah. Because we would never just walk ourselves into a paid banquet of dignitaries when we haven't purchased a ticket. If we did not even receive an invite. Amen? No, we would not do that. We know Pookie and them might do it, but we wouldn't do it. But the fact remains, she did. But when she came, when she came, now I mentioned earlier she did not come empty handed. So when she came, she had three major things she brought with her, not just the perfume, amen, somebody. She brought three major things that she needed to guarantee that her intrusion would not be in vain. In other words, she did not come to the occasion empty handed. Touch yourself and say, I notice I didn't say touch your neighbor. I said, touch yourself and say, if you're going to crash the party, at least bring something. She came to the party, but she did not come empty handed. The first thing she came when she came into this party is that she brought determination. She was determined with her broken and repentant heart uh -huh. to honor Jesus, Jesus along God. with her tears yes. and probably her most valuable possession, mm -hmm. that of the most expensive perfume she had. Yes. It may have been all that she had to anoint Jesus yes. with, yes. but the price of that perfume would not compare to the cost of sin debt that yes. she would Jesus. owe had Jesus not already put his purpose into play. Uh -huh. The scripture says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, yes. Christ died. Yes. Amen? Yes. He already knew that he would die for this woman yes. and anybody else who would give their hearts to him, wow. including all of yes. us. Can I get a witness here? Wow. She was determined to get to him, no matter who was in the room. Right. She didn't care if it was the priest, the pope, or whoever. <laughs> If it's in the room, Jesus is all you need. Amen? Amen. Pumping circumstance goes out the window when Jesus is in the room. Yeah. Yeah. 
understand that in this particular room, there is not enough space wow. for Jesus and doubt at right. the same time. Right. We cannot have doubt and determination. Right. Can I get a witness yeah. here? Amen. Determination is the same thing that made a group of friends tear the roof off a house to take their crippled friend to Jesus to get healed. Amen? Who does that? People with determination. So ask yourself the question, would you raise the roof for Jesus? Hallelujah. Pun intended. Determination is also the thing that caused the woman with the issue of blood to get to Jesus. Are you willing to drag your sick self out of the bed at times to come into the house of the Lord? I understand there are some illnesses that will prevent us from coming to church. But then there are times when we have just said, I don't feel like it today. Yes. Understand that determination will override our feelings. Yes. Amen. Amen. Our feelings are connected to our hearts, which yes. the Bible describes as deceitful. Yes. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Wow. According to Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Understand, saints, that our hearts will also go in the direction of comfort. Yes. Wow. Our comfort zones yes. cannot fuel our determination. That's right. yes. This woman was not concerned about comfort. Yes. She was concerned about being covered. Yes. Wow. Her determination caused her to come unannounced yes. among highfalutin yes. folk. <laughs> it caused her to come among the dignitaries. Yes. It caused her to come among the Sedidi people. Yeah. It caused her to come among the, the, the hypocritical religious leaders. Yeah. But nevertheless, she came. Yeah. So we must ask ourselves the rhetorical question. Can we show the love of Christ in front of the who's who of our day? Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes into his glory. Amen? I guarantee there may be some times that we won't feel comfortable doing that, but Jesus will still be with us. Amen. And he'll be there with open arms to accept us each and every single time. We don't have to worry about the enemy when we have Jesus. We can be determined to come to Jesus at any time, any place, no matter who's in the building. That's right. The next point I want to bring is that she, she brought her transparency. All right. Okay. Her transparency was honest. Yes. She did not try to put on a front. Okay. She did not try to put on airs. Mm -hmm. She was an open book. Yes. Amen? Amen? People can see right through her. That's right. But she did not care. Mm. She had already emptied herself yes. so that Jesus can fill her with him. Thank you. Yeah. We won't be able to let go of poisons within when we're trying to hold on to toxins that begin to take up the space that we need to allow Jesus to come in to fill. That's why Jesus can't fill many of us because we're literally full of stuff. Amen. Confess your sins and repent. We're always good at posting stuff. Pictures of our valuable possessions on social media. But we don't want nobody to see when we've missed payments on that beautiful house. So when we're going into foreclosure, amen, somebody. We, 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 we tend to post the romantic getaways, but we don't want to tell nobody when one of us is sleeping on the couch after the argument. Hallelujah. We want folks to see our glory. But oftentimes, we don't want to share our story. Amen? But the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to front with God. That's right. He already knows it all. We just need to confess it. According to Psalm 139, verse 23 through 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there is any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Yeah. Only Jesus can come in and make us over from the inside out. Yeah. Only he can shift our lives yeah. that nobody else can. With every tear this woman cried for every single moment of indiscretion that she played a part in. She knew that she had to yield. She had to submit to the one who can make everything all right. Yeah. She knew he was there in the room 
And so she had to get to him. She needed to get to him. And she did not care who was there. Yes. And I imagine that she probably said in her mind that she was in this day and age, when peace like a river yes. attended yes. my way, yes. when sorrows like sea billows roll, yes. whatever yes. my lot yes. thou hast taught me to say, it is, it is well yes. with my soul. Yes. When Christ is the goal, we can be transparent. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to put on airs for people who may not even like you in the first place. Wow. Jesus already knows our struggles. Wow. And he will guide us until the day is done. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Hallelujah. Women and men, we have to be transparent about this relationship. Yes. Yet a time is coming and is now come when the true believers and worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. And for they are the kinds of worshiper that the Father seeks. Yes. The last point I want to make that this woman brought to this party is that she brought her faith. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. That's the biggest thing she brought. Faith shut down the party yeah. and the Pharisees' agenda for the moment. Faith will come in and interrupt some things. That's right. When the devil tries to throw us off with tangible things that we can see with our physical eyes, faith will come in and say, we walk by faith and not by sight. It doesn't matter how it looks. We already know the famous cliche that looks are deceiving. It's yes. worn out, but it's true. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. Furthermore, we should already know by now that God doesn't care about looks. Yes. Yes. Amen. God anointed the youngest and least suspecting scrawny looking little brother to become <laughs> king of Israel. Yes. Did he not do it? Yes. Did he not do it? Can I get a witness yes. here? Understand that the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit comes from God. Thank you. And he will use whoever he so chooses. Yes. Amen? Yes. There were two sisters, Leah and Rachel. Yes. Rachel was the beautiful and more, and, and more loved, but Leah, not so pretty. But she had the anointed womb, amen? Yeah. Oh, don't worry about how the world views you and judges you when you have the favor and anointing yeah. of God. Hallelujah. Sarah was old yeah. and could not produce yeah. children. But God did not care how old she was when he anointed her and Abraham to produce Isaac. Yeah. Where is your faith and why do you doubt? I know the ways look vicious and scary, uh -huh. but are you so consumed about how they look? Are you going to keep your eyes on the one who can control them and who made them? Yes. If you've ever noticed uh, or ever seen or experienced fire out of control, even the spark of a flame, the visual aspect of it alone and the thought and the fear, it, it, it's enough to capture you. But the fear of it did not terrify the strongest persons of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego oh, yeah. who went into the flames. It was their faith and the power of God yeah. that put them in the mind frame. Come what may, if God delivers us, it's all good. Yeah. If he doesn't, he's still good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he's not intimidated by looks. Yeah. Can I get a witness here? Yeah. It was faith that caused Noah to build a cruise ship when there was no water present. It was faith that caused Abraham to almost sacrifice his anointed and long-awaited son. It was faith that caused the walls of Jericho to fall after the army of the Lord marched around them for seven days with a shout. Will you shout, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue. Do we have faith that does not cower in the face of adversity? Yeah. Reverend Martin Luther King said, he said it plainly, faith is taking the first step when you don't even see the whole staircase. That's right. You don't have to see it. You just have to believe that it's there. And many of us will probably believe that uh, um, 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 most importantly, the, the main the main person, the main one, the main supreme being in this whole text 
that had the most faith out of everybody and who we come to worship is in the person of Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 I can cite many biblical accounts and quotes, but there is no one like the one who walked by faith and not by sight. Yes. Many of us would probably believe that he would have come into this world and on a grand, um, strong appearance. Uh -huh. No, he still, still he came in as, as, as weak as a babe. Yes. Yes. Humble as a lamb. Yes. His place of birth was that of a smelly manger. Yes. And not a place suitable for a typical oh, king. Amen. Isaiah even foretold that his physical appearance would not be one that we should desire him. According to Isaiah 53 and 2, yes. God does not care about looks, no. but about faith. Yes. Jesus could have rode into Jerusalem on a grand regal Clydesdale horse, the one that we used to see in a Budweiser beer commercial. But no, he rode into town on a what? A donkey. Amen. There was no dignified, highfalutin, pomp and circumstance to his entrance at any time. That's right. Far too many times we place our faith in the wrong things. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. But Paul said in his letter in, in the book of 1 Timothy 1 and 19, cling to your faith in Christ yes. and keep your conscience clear. Yes. For some people have deliberately and deliberately violated their consciences. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Yeah. But oh, I have this hope as an anchor of the soul, yeah. firm and secure. He is Jesus the Christ. Yeah. Yeah. His faith led the way yeah. through his 33 years. Yeah. His faith led the way through the Garden of Gethsemane yeah. when sweat like yeah. drops of blood ran down his face yeah. because of the agony, agony of what was to come. Yeah. But yet he proclaimed. He proclaimed and he asked his father to take this cup from him. Yeah. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Faith will move mountains right out of the way. Yeah. And your mountains can be in the form of people, amen? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. These yeah. people can be the ones that God has allowed to test your faith. Yeah. But when a man's ways please the Lord, wow. he will make even his enemies yeah. be at peace with yeah. him, Lord God. And he will make your enemies your footstool. Yeah. Even when they are all in their dignified grandeur, with their titles and position, God will use the simplicity of the gospel to confound their so-called wisdom. Yeah. That's right in the word of God. Yeah. When Mary came among these men with her expensive perfume, she did not care that they were that they will look down upon her. She was saying, I am a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. That's what she was saying when she came into the room. This, this woman knew the atmosphere that she was walking into, but she did not care. She wasn't concerned about how they looked upon her. She was concerned about showing love towards the one who can yes. make it every, yes. make everything all right. Thank you, Lord. It's like that when you're with your sweetheart. Amen. For those of you who are married and about to be married, you can be in a room full of people. But to you, he or she is the only one that you see and notice. Yes. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness yes. here? She knew that whatever she needed was in the room. That's right. And that's all she needed to know. She did not care about the guest list. She did not care who was there and what they had to say about it. She didn't even care what they thought of her. As far as she was concerned, none of them had a heaven or a hell to put her in. But she knew the one who did, amen? And the atmosphere looked intimidating. But she knew Jesus is supreme over all men. Yeah. Women and men, that is exactly what we need to be. We need to show up bold for Jesus yeah. with a purpose. Yeah. Show up with a purpose. Yeah. Understand yeah. something. Yeah. 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 When Jesus asked the Pharisee Simon about the parable of the two persons who had the debts, Jesus was setting the stage to make his point about this woman's spiritual condition. See, it's easy for those of us who feel like we have nothing to lose or gain to be indifferent wow. about the gift of salvation wow. because we don't care. That's wow. right. We, we, we already feel as though uh, we may have arrived. To us, they may have everything they need. Uh -huh. But when someone has a debt, 
-huh. that we know that we cannot afford to pay, wow. yes. Come there on. is no way possible for anyone to help but Jesus. It becomes a hopeless state of being yes. right. when we don't have Jesus. Yes. Have you ever had bills that you could not afford wow. to pay? Yeah. Have your days yeah. ever been interrupted by phone calls from creditors? I call them creditor bullies <laughs> that will even call your job right. when you owe them money. Lord Some of them will even act like they are, are your best friend right. yeah. by addressing you by your first name yeah. only. Uh -huh. Have you ever had it happen? Uh -huh. However, Jesus, yeah. Jesus comes and pays the debt that yeah. nobody else can yeah. afford to pay. That's not to say for you to tell your creditor that Jesus paid it all. <laughs> but he pays a sin debt that nobody else could afford to pay. And there's an understanding about the magnitude of our spiritual need to us. When there's an understanding, it becomes critical. One person owes the money lender 50 denarii. The other person owes the money lender 500 denarii. Back then, a denarii was the equivalent of a whole day's pay. Mm -hmm. 50 denarii would equal 50 days. Mm -hmm. That's about, that's a lot, but it's, it's not as much as 500 denarii, no. which equals 500 days. Mm -hmm. to, to put it in proper perspective, there's 365 days in a year. Yes. Yes. So basically, this person owes a year's salary and then some. And, yeah. and then there, here comes Jesus who has already paid the debt. Yes. And Judas wants Thank to sit God. around and whine about the cost of a bottle of perfume. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. That's why they were so vexed with Jesus. Because he consistently and effortlessly made them look like the foolish leaders they were. Yes. Wow. And then he allowed a sinner yes. to come in and show them what faith is. Yes. Hallelujah. When we become bankrupt and life drains us of every resource that we thought we could rely on, faith replenishes yes. and restores. Yes. Yes, yes. God allows us to drink from the well that won't run dry. There is a fountain drawn from Emmanuel's yeah. veins. Sinners plunge beneath the flood, loose all their guilty stains. When we get tired and life zaps all the strength we thought we had, Faith tells us to come to Jesus. Yeah. All you who are weary and, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you yeah. and, and yeah. learn from me. Yeah. For my yoke is easy yeah. and my burden is light. Yeah. When we get physically sick and our bodies are wrapped with pain and disease, yeah. faith tells us he was wounded for our transgression yeah. and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. When we are broken hearted and the pain is so intense that we are begging God to heal our broken heart, faith tells us that God is near to the broken hearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Pick up your hearts, beloved, and know that you are loved by the divine. When addictions in the form of strongholds of our flesh and the people that won't allow us to be free, Submit to God because faith will tell us that the Lord is my life yeah. and my salvation. Yeah. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of yeah. whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. Oh, when we need to pray yeah. and we can't find the words to say. Faith tells us that the Holy Spirit will help us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we ought to pray. Yeah. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that are too deep for words. Hallelujah. Yeah. Faith. Yes. What about faith? Yeah. So faith comes by hearing. Yeah. Hearing the word of God. Yeah. Who is the word? Yeah. The word is Jesus. Yeah. In the beginning was the word. Yeah. And the word was with God. Yeah. And the word was God. Yeah. Know that he feels as we feel, although he is not of sin. Yeah. And because of that, the devil thought he had an advantage over him, the word. But Jesus said not to date devil. I guess you didn't learn the first several times. Yeah. Devil, I know you are occupied with how it looks and how we feel. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Devil, I know you're real tricky. And you tried to twist the words of God against the word himself. Talking about throw yourself down and let the angels catch you. Let you dash your foot against the stone. But Jesus said, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. 
And devil, you not being the most brightest crayon in a box, tried it again. You tried to get Jesus to worship you. But Jesus said, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. You see, Jesus knows how to set the atmosphere of a party. He is the atmosphere. He can turn water into wine when it all runs out. He can bring dead things to life. He can set us free when some things yeah. kept us bound. Yeah. He can heal physically and spiritually. Yeah. He is the word. He is the epitome of determination. He is the epitome of transparency. Yeah. He is the epitome of faith. Yeah. When Judas sold him out, Jesus said, do it quickly. When Peter chopped off the centurion's ear in defense, Jesus said, if you live by this war, you will die by this yeah. war. Yeah. They punched, they beat, and they mocked him. But Jesus said, you do not take my life, but I choose to lay it down. They pushed the crown of thorns on his skull and nailed his extremities to the cross. But Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The dying thief on the cross repented. Jesus said, today you shall be with me in paradise. His body was disfigured as blood gushed from his body. But Jesus said, it is finished and he died. The earth quick. The veil torn in two. But Jesus stayed dead on Saturday. He stayed dead all day Friday night. The disciples hid in fear and hopelessness. Jesus stayed dead. Hallelujah. Saturday night they were still hopeless and still fear. But Jesus stayed dead. But early on Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hand. And he said, go to my brother and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God. And your God, he got up with all power in his hand. He interrupted Satan's agenda. He shut some things down. He set the atmosphere. He crashed the party. He already said before the appointed time, on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He gave us all the key. He gave us the key. He gave us faith. He gave us love. He gave us salvation. He gave us wisdom. He gave us his Holy Spirit. He gave us all power. He gave us the anointing. Now what will you do with it? Will you show up? Or will you show up with something? Will you bring something to the party? Or will you show up empty handed? What will you do for God? Hallelujah. He's able. Hallelujah. Christ the solid rock I stand. All on the ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All on the ground is sinking sand. God bless you.